okay, we started the pod. Look, I've got to get ahead of this. Okay. And I need, I'm, I'm, I'm in a mature adult. I'm a, I'm a man and I need to come clean. Okay. Last pod or two pods ago, we had an emailer come and wanted to be anonymous. And I thought I did a good job of that. Turns out I did not. I totally outed this person. And in the next pod, I said, I don't think I did. And I even doubled down on it. And I said, you shouldn't even email a pod unless you want to be on it. Say, don't share this on the pod. We, we got on our case and look at us. Look at me. I'm what a, happened? <laughs> How'd I you got find three, out? I got three emails about it. <gasps> uh, From her or other people? No, actually, I got two emails about it saying, hey, you you did it on this minute, this second on this pod. And uh, I am not above apologizing. And I won't say her name again, but I am very sorry that it's it was a slip of the tongue and you were right. Oh, you said her name. I said her name. And um, the damage is done. You know, the damage is done. I don't even remember it if it makes you feel better. I potentially ruined a friendship. Um, I lost well, a viewer. Mm, I don't well, know about that. No, no, I, d I won't let you take the like Thanks. that on that you've ruined a friendship because this Thank girl, you. why do you want to be friends with him if you feel these negative things about him anyway? Like. It wasn't cool. If you're really friends with someone and you're not going to write an anonymous mo anonymously and talk shit. I just wanted to do my part and clean up my side of the street. And I am very sorry. Better? I feel I feel great just in general. Um, I had a moment where mm -hmm. I was like, that's not great, Cass. Own up to it. Apologize. And then guess what? Tonight, I'm going to sleep like a baby because it's really not that big of a fucking deal. If we're we just going to be take, honest about it. We could take time on this pod you know her email if you'd like to construct an email to this young lady because she might not because she doesn't list she doesn't listen to us right she made that clear i'm hoping josh right. clips this and sends it to her since he are knows. we calling josh are we supposed to talk to josh <laughs> do you want to talk to josh i mean it's, it's up to you guys kind of I I don't know guy maybe we'll He's do it kind next of the time. fourth member now. i don't want to surprise him maybe we'll set it up for next week or something we got to see I, I want maybe he can I would check love in with to her. Surprise him! What do you mean? I think, I think if so you do better. do it, you got to keep him on his toes and do it as shot because then he can plan. Because what she tries to say is this guy might not be the charming guy he appears to be. So if we're going to give him a week to prepare, but yes. but here's the thing: I think we need a week to prepare. <laughs> so <laughs> let's not. We don't have to tell him, but we could surprise him next week. But then he might see, he's going to see this. Wow. Well, I think. In, look, I think. If we do it, I just call him right now. Okay? Do it. Let's just say let's just say we tried it, okay? Okay, yeah. Sure. Okay. We don't love, know how to I'm, we don't I love it. It's this just going right to have now. to be it's going to have to be on speakerphone and right. um okay. this is the best we can do. I wonder what his voicemail is. At the tone, please record your message. When you've finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Just cast them hey, over here. Josh, this is Cassim G. Um, you are on the pod right now. This was our opportunity to get you on the pod. Um, I, I hope you can uh, save this number and know that if you see this number, you need to pick up right away. Okay. We got to get you on the pod. I outed your ex best friend. And we need to figure it out. We need to clear the air. And and if you need me to like sort of on behalf apologize for you to like sort of save salvage this friendship, I can do that. Um, for her. I, I love you. Why and does I, he have to apologize? No, he I say I, wrong. Well, he well he treated her badly. Okay, he said he might have treated so her she badly. Says. So he says, let's get the full story, Josh. Uh, this is Kazan, pajama pants. Bye. <laughs> You didn't leave your number. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's 2022. What do you mean, leave my number? Wow. You know that there's, I, I we've talked about this, I think, on the pod before. Uh, wonderful women have done this to me in my life. There's an app where you can change your phone number when you call someone to appear as any phone number you want. Wow. So when I was, yeah, when I was like insane and like 22 and like drunk all the time in this, uh, if there was a young lady who maybe I was not picking up her calls, uh, she would call me as one of my friends. Oh. And then, yeah, and then I would pick up. <laughs> but, like, also... <laughs> That's fucked up. Oh, my God. It's the worst thing ever. Like, you should yeah. never do it. And, like, 
Uh, it's terrible. I'm, by the way, even my best friends, I feel bad calling twice. You know what I mean? Like, like if it's like very important, I will. But I'm such a like one caller, and then if not, it's like all right. Like, yeah, I've never. Yeah. I I mean, there were times where when I was young, there were people who would call me like back to back six times, and then it's like if it's like even if I do pick up on this sixth time, like how do you feel about yourself? Oh, That's, I, think I think he's calling. I think he's calling. Okay, one moment. Wow. Hey, Josh. Hey, Cassim, what's going on? Okay, man? hang on one second. Okay, Josh, you were on the Pajama Pants podcast. Uh, hey, Josh. What's going on, everybody? I'm so glad you called. Listen, um, it turns out that I actually thought I was keeping your friend anonymous. Turns out I actually did say her name. This woman that <laughs> uh, called in to completely drag, drag you. Did you? <laughs> yes, I did. And I didn't remember, but I got a couple emails about it. And I, and I set up an apology but I wanted to call you to see if I ruined anything and maybe I can help patch things up. What's your current relationship with the emailer? <laughs> um, I'm going to be very honest. It's not good, but <laughs> that, <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of inevitable once I kind of dialed it down. And I'll tell you what gave it away was she used the word dude in the email. And I knew exactly who talked like that. And the whole, oh, he's a good dude thing immediately sparked wow so, uh, so it wasn't anything. even you Cassim. well it wasn't me but i no, but i did great. out her to uh however many thousands of listeners that we had i mean that still wasn't great but i'm i wonder I, if i wonder if you outed her the second time we spoke about her or was it the first n- no it wasn't the second it was the first time it was the first. wow um josh <laughs> what so josh can you just like can you just tell us what happened with you guys? Like now that this girl is just like clearly not in your life, like, you know, she's clearly not a friend. What happened? Yeah. Um, she is somebody who I met through the industry. We're both stand in. Um, so oh, she's, she's a stand in well. too. Yeah. She was a long time stand in on a show called Grey's Anatomy. So we just met through mutual friends and just kind of got friendly through that. But, there were times where we'd hang out and one thing would kind of lead into another, but I ended up getting into a relationship. And while I was in that relationship, she still wanted to maintain a friendship. So we did continue to hang out and we would go to events and we went to an Amazon prime event not too long ago. And she kind of confessed that there was still some feelings there. And she knew I had a girlfriend at the time. And they started like Instagram stalking each other, following each other's <gasps> stories and things like that. And it just got real, real weird, real messy. And um, so I kind of pulled back and we hadn't really even seen each other until, well, not seen each other, but communicated until I found out that she had sent you guys that email. And that's what <sighs> I was like, hey, was that you? <laughs> Wait, okay. So cool. you, yeah, well, Josh, so you confronted her. You did reach you- out and you said, uh, hey, I know you sent an email about me to Pajama Pants. Dude. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of, at first I wasn't going to do it, but it was just gnawing away at me because she did text me after she had sent the email before I had reached out to say anything to her, being like, hey, buddy, what's up? How you been? Hey, I'm dude. Like, uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we could have, like, almost like she was testing the waters a little bit, but. Very interesting. And she doesn't, and she does, so she doesn't listen to Pajama Pants, right? She just saw it on your Instagram? Yeah, so I think, Captain, you also saw it, but when I posted on my Instagram story, it was segments where you guys were definitely shredding me, and it was... <laughs> well, it wasn't me, <laughs> Josh. Josh, I, I want you to be clear. Uh, that I Josh, was on, I, Josh and I never Josh felt like we shredding. shredded you. That's fair. Yeah. Jamie and Rob were shredding me. You were people. <laughs> I don't know if I shredded you as a person as much as I shredded your profile. I think I tried to make you. Yeah. That's what we're doing. I was trying to make you have a better profile. Of that's it. Of course. That's absolutely true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's oh, fair. Oh. And I was laughing the entire time. But when I posted it, it was self-deprecating. Absolutely. Took right. Me, like, oh, he's a hot shot. That thing because he got mentioned on the podcast. That. It is okay. So uh, I ask you, it, it's very clear that this is still sort of like a, a t- it's a tender wound for her. It's very she's sensitive to uh, things involving you. Yeah, you could tell that it's not a completely healed, uh, clean breakup. 
Now, when you told when she reached out to you, um, you she, you didn't know that she had sent that email, and so she was doing a check. And then, yeah, what happened after that? Um, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not super proud, but I did just send a voice memo being like, "Yo, in a way, you did kind of body shame me. That was a really like it was a really shitty thing to do." And I just kind of left her a voice memo saying all of that. Um, Good for you. Actually, she acknowledged it. She came clean about it. And she was like, you've wanted to be famous forever. I was trying to humble you. I'm your friend. I was doing it as a friend. And I was like, oh, by going on a podcast to do it. <laughs> Instead of doing it. To my wow. Bed. Wow. So the, yeah, the, I'm so sorry this happened. I'm so sorry, but this is made for great pod for us. And I want to thank you both. Yeah. You've back. given us a lot of content. Well, here's, <laughs> here's what, here's what I'd like to say. I don't think that uh, anything I did was shredding you, but this might be, I think maybe we should read the email that she sent with him on the phone so we can go okay. through the okay. things that she said. Okay, yeah, he did kind of clear it up in an email, but this would be great to sort of get a live reaction. No, remember he said I would clear it up on the phone because he was like, I don't think this email can even do justice to what I need to say. Okay, all right, let me find her email. <laughs> yeah, well, first let's ask him. You down? You down, Josh? We get your uh, consent? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. absolutely. One moment. And, and are you currently still um, doing stand-in work and sitting on top of uh, planes? Uh, Josh, <laughs> in and on and, yeah, planes. Actually, on set right now. Oh, I really? Just, uh, had a quick. Yeah, I just had a quick role on a show that's going to be coming out with Jason Segel and Harrison Ford later Ooh. on. The on TV Plus. Oh wow! Congrats. And how does this Harrison Ford? Yeah, thank you. How, how does Harrison Ford get onto set? Do they wheel him in? Is it like on a dolly, or do they sort of like lower him through a hatch? Are you age shaming him? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> sort of like Bernie situation. They just put some sunglasses on him and push him into the set. And he just Perfect. That's great. Are you just saying? Hi. Just are, hi. You, <laughs> are you saying that show is filled with people who are old and out of shape? <laughs> All right, guys. This show today is sponsored by BetterHelp. If you've been looking for talk therapy and you're tired of just word of mouth and people telling you, hey, you should talk to my guy. He charges $300 an hour. Talk to this person. Hey, he's kind of cool. I've just been seeing him my whole life. I don't know if it works. Uh, no more. Go to BetterHelp. They will sign you up uh, in minutes, and within 48 hours, you'll get matched with a licensed therapist that you can talk to every week for a fraction of the cost as it is to have a therapist traditionally. And you can message them all week. They will message you back. It is, uh, it's changed the game in talk therapy. And if you're not using it, and you've always wondered if I should be talking to someone, you should be talking to someone. You know, if you're a listener to this podcast, we are all uh, really yeah. big on talk therapy. And it's helped us out through every sort of up and down that we've had. And if you've ever wondered kind of what that was like, now is a great opportunity. That's right, because navigating any of life's challenges can make you feel unsure, whether it's a career change or a new relationship or becoming a parent. And therapists are trained to help you. They're trained to help you figure out the cause of challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills, which makes therapy basically the closest thing to a guided tour of the complex engine called you. So as the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. And if things aren't clicking, you can literally switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash pajama. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash pajama. Our next partner has a product I use literally every day. I've told you guys about this. Mm -hmm. I started taking AG1, Athletic Greens, because I'm sick of taking a million supplements. You know, I don't, I don't like the way they feel. I don't like having to sort of keep track. Athletic Greens does it for me because it has 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help me start my day right. And let me also tell you, it tastes great. Doesn't it, Cass? 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when you sign up, you get a, 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 a nice tin and you also get some to go AG ones. Um, and, uh, to me, they are really good and they pack nicely and they're a way to sort of get all these vitamins and minerals in one shot. I like to get things done, right? If I like to get on the bike in the morning, take my shot of athletic greens and I've set up my day sort of correctly. And every decision I make after that tends to be healthier. Um, right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash pajama. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash pajama to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Um, okay, I got the email pulled up here. I'm glad you're still working uh, as we head into a recession. Thanks, man. Um, okay, so yeah. this is the email again. I dated Josh, uh, parentheses, we are friends now. I died laughing at your lying. review of his profile. He's not a pilot. He took a couple lessons. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's not. She's not wrong. She's not wrong. And it's just so great with that. Basically, like our emails match that word for word. I already said I'm not a pilot, and she's like, he's not a pilot. <laughs> but you took a couple lessons, Josh. What What was it that made you not want to take a third? You know, you're was, more of a pilot than any of us here. That's right. Why not follow through? <laughs> well, my friend, yeah, good question. My friend is a uh, flight instructor, and she had taken me up to log hours under the table because, like I said, school is very expensive. So I'm still mm -hmm. saving up to do legitimate school, like ground school. But I'm yeah. lo I've logged hours with her because she's an instructor. Okay, cool. so so you did that thing that, like, when my older friends let me drive their cars before I had a license so I can get a few reps in. That way, when my test came, I could just nail it. And exactly. Yeah. And so that's why I was able to do takeoff and be able to taxi and everything like that. Cause she had the co-pilot job, the man, the yoke, obviously this is why I'm not a pilot, but <laughs> she was always under control. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm glad we could clear that up. All right. So she goes on to say he's a good dude, but dates multiple girls at <laughs> once. And he doesn't look like that shirtless anymore. Bitter. That one is the one that stung. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> of course, of course, that stings. I'm not gonna lie. Um, because she's I'm like, also, who's seen me shirtless recently? I'm trying right. to think. I just couldn't. She's narrowing it down for you, right? Um, mm -hmm. and then she says he's a stand-in and lives with his mom, so that's oh. how he's getting by. Now, this, this to me is more of a, this is a hard truth here. You know, like <laughs> she's. A lot of people are saving money, right? M millennials, we can't afford houses. I mean, you can't afford houses. And so here, you can. I can, of course I can. I'm, I'm, I'm well Multiple. Uh, I have a couple. And, and so here you are saving money, living with your mom. That's nothing to be ashamed of, but she's using it here like, a, like she's jabbing you with Yeah, it. so rude. Didn't like that. Yeah, so I got laid off when the economy started to tank, I used to be a loan officer for a mortgage company. Oh, so you're and part of the problem, the actually. Oh, I'm part of the problem, man. Yeah. yeah. It's that guy at the top. Um, <laughs> and when the interest rates started spiking, I got laid off. So I actually went back to acting as a way to kind of supplement my income, which is why I did go back to move in with fam recently. So also not wrong. Yeah. Um, there. Well, you're, you know, also what, like you. nothing to be ashamed of. Like, fuck that. I didn't like that. Like, we didn't like that. That That's all. Okay. How, how lucky are you that you have family to fall back on? That's how I look at it. I'm that's so how lucky. I look at it, too. Thank yeah. you. Jamie. Despite the fact that it's in the Orange County bubble, still people lucky. Um, Jamie's um, only saying this stuff because she knows I'm three months away from living in her pool house. That's right. I pray you are. <laughs> yeah. Um, they, okay, so... That sounded like a good setup. It is a great setup there. She goes on <laughs> to say, he thrives on attention and adds all the girls that he comes across on Bumble to up his follower account and, of course, shared on Instagram that you guys talked about his profile. Now, I when I read this on the pod, 
I I didn't like this line either because what a what a terrible way to bot your follower count. It's a very slow way, you know. I but um it does again, it, it just reeks of somebody who was who's been badly burned by you, you know, and she's yeah, she doesn't she's she's now three sentences in a row as taking you to task. Yeah, and, and also for a girl that like has a lot of like negative things to say about you, like she clearly liked you so much. So she's just reaching for things to. Oh, those are always the ones with the most negative yeah, stuff to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like they're not even making yeah. sense. Yeah, well, Josh. You guys have had situations in the past where you guys have dated somebody and then maybe it didn't go well. And then the yeah. instinct that they have is to go to all your friends and be like, he was this, he was that. And just kind of slander you a little bit so that they can be do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she seems like she seems, I mean, look, I know we're piling on her here and I'm going to have to give her an opportunity to call in the show, um, and maybe <laughs> herself out. But her last sentence here says, since you see my a- email, you know, my name, but I'd like to stay anonymous. So my friendship with him isn't shredded. Ha ha. Whoop. Whoops. Indeed. Oh, shredded. You guys use the same, the same term terminology. You guys hang out a lot, huh? Yeah. Well, it's the Orange County, LA area, baby. We're all shredded down here. That's right. We're all shredded or we're trying to get shredded. Um, Josh, while you have the the sort of stage that she claims that you uh, crave, the attention of everyone listening, what would you would you like to issue a uh, sort of public apology? Now, what you do behind the scenes is your business. You can reach out. She can reach out. But give you this opportunity, the last sort of like 30 seconds here to a minute to issue maybe some sort of like a uh, formal apology or statement. Did he, he do anything wrong? Well, maybe just a statement. I mean, it doesn't have to be an apology. Maybe, yeah, you maybe have he, nothing to feel. Maybe he can about. apologize for anything. He feels like he needs to apologize. I'm just giving you a minute here to just, uh, I'm platforming you, you know, when, when, uh, when people do that, when they accuse others, I'm giving you the stage. Besides being a fat guy who lives with his mom, I think he comes off great. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if I'm I'm sorry you're just like such an overweight piece of shit, but like if you can maybe just put the hoagie <laughs> down for a second and then, you know, just like address the people here, that would be great. Yeah, let me finish chewing really quick. Yeah. And then um say what I say. Um no on your I twin bed. To what I said also in one of my emails to Rob, which is I used to be a chubby kid. That was hundred percent true. Yeah. I used to be not looked at by anyone and then i kind of had the quote-unquote glow up after high school so i've been trying to make a lot of effort to not be an attention seeker or to thrive off of that but i get when i post certain things or if i do pose on a plane or something like that girls see it that way and that is not ever my impression i just still have a part of me that seeks validation and um I am working on it, and I think when I get into a relationship or a friendship with girls, sometimes when they get interested or vice versa, I can kind of complicate things by wanting to not jump into something so quick because I might have a better option or look to have a better relationship out there. And so I do maybe send mixed signals sometimes. So I can totally understand why, in this case, maybe she was thinking it would develop into something more, and then when it never did, I became the bad guy which is completely understandable so i get why she feels this way i have a lot of respect for you josh you sound like you're really self-aware you're honest you're a good guy i'm glad i've been team josh this whole time wow i don't know to me you sound a little verbose but thank you so much for bringing me on here you guys have been (laughs) like i said i've been listening since the very beginning i love sopranos and now i love Catherine. So, well, we love you, and you, you know I love friends. you. And um, you know, <laughs> our, what is your current what is your current relationship status right now? Very single. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh well, have you? Here's the important man, question. Ago, so I'm I'm very single right now. Okay. Did you? Uh, did our? Did we make you make any changes to your dating profile? One hundred percent. Oh, yeah, maybe you should, let, let's hear yes, it. Maybe you should send us the new updated photos and then we'll throw them up and compare them to the old photos. And then we'll yeah, do how's like the action. Any, any difference in the action okay. since the changes? Yeah, I've definitely got, 
I've gotten some positive feedback, but the one thing that Rob said that really stuck with me right off the bat was, I think this is his worst photo. <laughs> and it was the one that I'm headlining with. So I automatically like rubbed that. Wow. The shirtless picture, even though I do still look like that, despite what some people say. <laughs> we believe you. I rearranged everything. And it's nothing to you. You should be very proud of it. But like, you know, send it after like a couple of dates when you're really interested and keep it private. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, let me tell you something. Yeah. There is nothing better than when you take the person you're dating's clothes off and it's way better than you thought. Yeah. Right. That's the shit. Yeah. You might want to like look at first Word. on the app and then under promise over deliver is what we say in the business yes oh yeah I okay well josh a mystery. please email me you have our email please email me the updated photos we'd love to see those and we're gonna throw those up with your permission and uh, i really appreciate you answering your phone or calling us back and um taking the time with us on pajama pants it was really great having you of course it was a total pleasure you guys are amazing Full love and respect to all of you guys. Okay, we'll talk soon. Uh, wish yeah. you nothing but great We appreciate sex. you, Josh. <laughs> Bye, Josh. Know, Bye, Josh. You were like one of the, like the long time. Thank you, guys. Okay, see ya. He was like one of our first listeners. Yeah, I he's feel a like. cool guy. He might have been Josh. like the first guy to write us an email ever. I remember getting uh, his first email. We were like, whoa, we got an email. <laughs> um. <laughs> 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 Gabby bleep that. You might as well. You might as well. Anonymous yeah, can... uh, anonymous emailer, ball is in your court. If you want to rebuttal to anything that Josh just said, she you know where me. to find us. Send us your phone number. We'd love to get you on the pod. Look, we he called us, he called in and we empathize more with him. We understand where he's coming from. No, we from. called him. Sure, he made some mistakes in the past, but nothing that we can't forgive and, and forget. So um, I want to thank Josh, you know, one of our oldest and dearest for coming on the pod. All is fair in love and pajamas, Anonymous. That's right. Wow. What a what an interesting pod it's been. I hope you guys forgive the sort of audio quality there, but I think it was important for us to sort of get get that as it was happening. I agree. Uh, we, Jamie, I have a question for you if, if we were ready to move on. I want to know, like, when you well, there's two things I want to know about parenting. The first one is like, do you find yourself feeling dumb more or like smart more because of the things that like maybe Bo brings stuff home from school and it's like you need to know something and you're like, yeah, that's right, mommy knows that too and that too. Or do you find yourself being like, uh, yeah, I, I don't know, like not yet. His stuff's not quite hard yet. Like he's still the only homework he brings home is math. Um, and I'm, it's still like beginning of multiplication division, Rudimentary. but yeah, but nice word, I dude. could definitely see, I could definitely see me feeling dumb. But what about like li soon. life, life questions? Like when he has life questions and he's like, mommy, what is so this? I'm gonna, I actually was going to bring something up in the pod today. Yes. I'm putting Bo to bed the other night and he was like, mom. Santa can't be real, right? Oh. And I was like, and I know it. Year? Like third grade, this is the time. Like third grade. This is spoiler like, alert, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. If anybody's got skip, their kids skip, in the car, skip, don't call skip, them please. Saint Nick. <laughs> Our next sponsor is Shopify. Jamie, you've used Shopify for your uh, Mama Says podcast, haven't you? I have. And you know, like that notification sound. You know, who actually leaves those sounds anymore? Well, you know who does? I do, because every time I hear one, it's another sale on Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. So if you're looking to start a business, Shopify makes it simple to sell to anyone from anywhere. So whether your thing is vintage t-shirts or recipes or starts, you can start selling anything with Shopify. So you just join the platform. It simplifies commerce for millions of your favorite businesses worldwide. Helps you create an online store in your vibe, discover new customers, grow your following, and have them keep coming back. It also has all the sales channels sorted. So your business just keeps growing from an in-person POS system to an all-in-one e-commerce platform, even across social media platforms like TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. 
Sign up for a free trial at shopify.com slash pajama, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash pajama to start selling online today. Shopify.com slash pajama. So I was like, well, like, do you, what do you think? And he's like, well, I mean, I just don't understand how he's still alive. Like he should be dead. Like Mm -hmm. no person can live this long. Like how can he be in so many places? He's always at the same mall we go to. Like that doesn't make sense. Like we've met him in New York. We've met him in LA. He, there's no way they can come down the chimney. Like I'm learning about science. So like the magic doesn't make sense. And he, for like, 10 minutes he was just thinking out loud and I was just listening like he was really trying to like reason and I felt bad because the only reason he was talking out loud is because like he still wants to believe I think it's just like I think he's kind of bummed and so I kind of just got him to fall asleep without talking about <laughs> it because because I didn't want to, I didn't want to tell him without talking to Cutter. Because I would have been pissed if Cutter told him without me. Like I think it's like a, like a, two person thing, or at least like let's discuss it before one of us tells him. Oh wow! So this morning, we told him, and he was like, he looked relieved, but also kind of like a little bummed. Hmm. But then I told him, I was like, but listen, like. We like you can't be the kid that tells everybody in your grade he's not real. See, like that's, this is that's the thing I was gonna ask about. I was like, you can't do it. And he's like, I know. And I was like, no, no, no. You really can't. And I know it's gonna be tempting to want to tell your friends, especially when they're talking about it. But here's why. I was like, some kids are not ready to not believe anymore. Like some kids still need to believe in Santa for whatever reason. Like there's kids that just they take it with them a little bit longer you're a really smart kid you figured it out yourself and we don't want to lie to you i was like that being said too can we get the credit i we bought everything everything was us and he was like oh yeah you okay. use that opportunity to get credit huh fuck yeah Do you know oh, much- wow. wow yeah but then wow. I said, I was like, but you're not going to ruin this for your brother. Think about how much fun it's been for the last nine years to believe in Santa. Like, it's he's only four. It's not fair to take that away from him. He was like, no, 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 I won't. I won't. So I don't know. Jury's out. I haven't talked to him really much today alone. Where I ha- There's Bo could either have really followed through or he ran and told everyone. I really, I really don't know. But yeah. it was, it was a conversation that. I don't know. I guess I I figured I guess nine years old was the time to have it. But it also made me a little sad. I was like, wow, he's he's growing up. The way that you say some kids aren't ready to not believe yet. Do you think that's going on with Josh and his abs? Like, do you think that's what's going Mm -hmm. on? Like he. Yeah, he's he. No, he said he was a fat kid. And he I think he's really proud of his body and he wants to like I get it. I I think what he was saying, and he's very, again, I thought he was very self-aware. He was just kind of like, I I get it that it makes me look douchey, but at the same time, like, it's my way of getting validation um, and attention for my body. No, that part I understand. I'm saying how she says he doesn't really look like that. Oh. You know, like he's walking around thinking he's got those abs just the same well, way. Well, that he's, wasn't, he's, I mean, there was a real picture, wasn't it? Yeah, but you can do anything. Like, I don't know. Maybe he got lean for a, a, a week for a role. Maybe he air bro- Maybe, you know, people edit these photos. You see, like, come on. We, we, we know what goes on. I like Josh had every opportunity to, like, you know, just, like, come up with an excuse or, like, swerve on a lot of those things. But he was very honest he with was. all that stuff. He really, really He's was. very honest. You know, back to the Santa thing, I remember one time... When I was younger, my my dad. I used to uh, bite my nails as a as like a a kid yeah, when I was like yeah. I don't know seven, <laughs> right? And um, my dad told me that, hey man, he said, hey dude, if you bite those nails and you swallow your nail, your nail will grow inside your stomach and poke through your skin and stab you. And I was like, oh shit! Instantly stopped biting my nails. Right? You did. I've, I never, I have never wow. done that since. I have incredible cuticles. However, I went to school the next day. You told everyone. And I was like, guys, 
I came upon some fucking information that I think you guys <laughs> need to know. And it is, don't bite your nails. You'll grow inside and they'll stab right through you. And everyone just looked at me. They're like, you're a fucking idiot. Yeah. Like I remember somebody's calling me the F word, you know, but not the other one, the double G one, you know, and like, oh. like, no, that's not fucking true. You, f you know, and, and I went home and I was like, dad, everyone made fun of me. Everyone made fun of me for that. Like, why, why would you tell me information that wasn't true? And he, and then he like doubled down on the lie. He did. I love it. That's what my but mom I, would have done. But it worked. I just. But never... here's the here's here's the thing with me. I think your that's different because your dad is trying is lying to you to stop you from doing a bad habit. The Santa is just a fucking bullshit, right? Poor shit. Well, what like, do you lie? What do you do in that, Jamie? You're the best, one of the best parents I've ever seen. You would you tell Bo? You saw him biting his nails. Would you tell him a lie like that to if you knew it would stop him from? biting his nails, knowing that he could go to school and get I, I There's a fucked up lie I tell my kids. I'm trying to remember what it is. Uh, the watermelon seed one I always believed until I was like 20. There's another one. Same yeah. same sort of thing with that. No, oh, there bro. was something recently that I told my kids that in, like, as I was saying it in my head, I'm like, Jamie, this is fucked up. And now I can't remember it. I'll, it'll come to me. About lying, maybe? No. Well, I told Bo that if he if he goes on YouTube or on the television or goes on his iPad, it alerts my phone. <laughs> I like that. And he goes, show me. And I'm like, no, I'm not showing you how it works. He's like, show me. Like, he's getting to the age where I can't bullshit him anymore. That's what Uncle Kasim is for. Though. There, you, Kasim could probably figure out how to get that. I know. You could. you could. There is a way for you to make that believable by searching through his watch history and and keeping note of what the last video he watched. Of course, was. of course. Right. But I think he just realizes I just look at him through the nest when I'm not here. Mm, mm, smart. Mm. He's getting he's getting a little too smart. He's getting a little too what smart. Do you, uh, does how old does Bo want a cell phone right now? Does he have? Yes. Yeah, so deal? he's just started asking when he could get one. And I was like, you don't need one. Like, we still have to take you everywhere. You're never anywhere without a parent or if you're with one of your friend's parents, like who I have their number. Like, you don't need one right now. I told him when he's 13, he can have one. And, and now he's nine? Four years, okay. huh? So, uh, yeah. you know, oh, but listen, this is, I was like, why do you want a phone? And this was his reason. He's like, because if I walk down the hall with my hoodie up with a phone, I just think it looks so cool. <laughs> Yeah, I thought he was going to say, like, the cases or, like, you know. Like, so. Everything's based on He just on a wants look. to wear a hoodie with a phone. He just wants to walk around like that. I was like, I could get you something that doesn't work and you can walk around like that, dude. Did I tell you he's been bullied? Oh, let's hear it. I don't think so. No, I didn't hear that. Yeah, so there is a fifth grader. And he's in who, third grade? Mm-hmm. Okay. But this is, this kid has been doing this to him since last year. Oh, wow. He, he's definitely um, jealous and or attracted to him. There must be something going on here. And he, I said to Bo, I was like, what, what does he do? And he's like, he just like will yell things out to me like in the hallway or if he sees me on the playground. I was like, so what does he say? And he's just like, he calls me a dork. He calls me a loser. He calls me a jerk. I'm like, what do you do? He's like, nothing. I don't want to say anything. I'm scared. That's good to be a little scared. Cause he's not getting scared at home. He, he walks all over you guys. He's lying, watching YouTube. You know? oh, so you no, but like he, but it just, I think uh, it just made me feel bad that this has been happening since yeah, last year. I'm just and kidding. Just Jamie. like, don't, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> of course. Not. I mean, you know, I'm not about telling my kid when he's an asshole, but like, I felt so bad for him. Of course. But, but I think you and I, we've talked about this before. He clams up and lies when like things get serious. So he told me, telling me all about this. And he was like, yeah, he's, you know, he said some stuff to me in the hallways. I just ignore him. So I tell Cutter and Cutter's like pissed. And he's like, I'm going to ask him who he is. I want when I pick him up, I'm going to make him point him out to me when I pick him up from school tomorrow. And I was like, Cutter, don't come on, calm down. Like, don't do this to him. He's already feeling like he doesn't want it to be called out or anything. But if he writes into the pod, we'll keep him anonymous. I promise. Yeah, please. Yeah. So I emailed his because Cutter was like on me. So I emailed the teacher and I was like, listen, I don't know. 
what the right thing is to do here. This is also Bo we're dealing with, so I don't know like how much of this <laughs> is true or not. But you know, he mentioned to me that there's an older boy that's been teasing him and um, you know calling him names and. I, I just want to make sure either it's less than what he's saying, but just not more than what he's saying. You know, Bo told me he didn't want me to tell me the kid's name. He didn't want to say anything. So she immediately writes me back with the guidance counselor, CC. And she's like, we take bullying very seriously. We're going to investigate this. Please ask him more details and I'll ask him as well. And then when we started asking Bo questions, his story just kept changing. He's on my bus. He's not on my bus. He was on my bus last year. It happened in the hallway. It didn't happen in the hallway. It happened on the playground. And so like, Mm. I finally had to sit him down and I was like, listen, like you're not in trouble. Nobody's going to get in trouble, but like you can't, as soon as anybody starts asking him questions, it's like what pap- it happens on TV shows when like detectives ask people questions and they get nervous and they just start saying, making up shit. He just, so I don't know. I So I, he finally said, he's like, no, there is a kid that has done this, but he's like, it's not a big deal. I don't want to talk about it anymore. It's fine. So I don't know. I I believe him that he's being bullied, but Um, look, as somebody who spent most of his childhood being bullied, uh, if this is like some sort of false flag operation that Bo is running, I'm, I'm going to be upset, you know, pretty fucked up, right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, if his, if his lying is getting worse after these conversations that you've had with him the last couple of years, I, I'm concerned. Well, what am I raising a sociopath? What's going on in my head? You know, cause there was this. I don't know, there was this Netflix documentary where this Dutch inventor, like in the Dutch <laughs> Elon Musk, he was like, you know, everyone loved him. And he, they were shooting this documentary about him. And then a journalist from Wired Magazine goes to interview him in a submarine that he built on his own. And she's never seen again. And he comes back on the submarine and they're like, hey, man, how'd it go? Where's that girl? He's like, oh, I dropped her off. And uh, they're like, well, we haven't seen her. He's like, oh, man, that's crazy. And then, like, they start interviewing him. His story changed every time. And it turned out he was a fucking, like, a murderer. And he's been planning on murdering this woman. And I'm not saying Bo is a murderer, but his story keeps changing. And I wonder what's going on with this kid. This is a kid I've shared space with. I've slept in the same home as this child. It all changes once they I find out Santa's not real. I don't have an answer. I'm really trying. I'm really, really trying. And I oh boy. I'm really I'm really trying to stay ahead of things. Well, you know what? I think that there's like always like a hundred cases of something. Like if you take a hundred cases of something, one of those hundred uh 99 of those kids, it's like, yeah, he used to lie all the time when he was a kid. And then one of them murders women on submarines. So you just got to hope, you know, the, the odds are definitely in your favor. You got 99. Yeah. I think he doesn't like, he doesn't even like hurt animals. So yeah, I, I think he's, Oh, I've, I've, I've seen both of your kids rough, rough, uh, being up a little bit. Yeah. Bo doesn't, <laughs> Bo, Bo doesn't anymore, but he did. When he was really, right? he did. No, no, I, I don't think you have any of that to, to worry about. I think they're both very, very sweet. And I think they're both being raised very, very well. We try. Uh, the the other thing that what was the other thing? Oh, the other thing I wanted to ask you about parenting is like, and obviously you know you you could never say like oh I wish I didn't have kids like you know we are not asking you to do that but when you see other people who don't have children more like me now the, the people with free time who can do whatever they want what what do you think what do you think is the best part about not having kids if you had to think about not having having kids just doing whatever you want without having to plan anything like not having like deciding something for yourself and having no one else to consider yeah it's great yeah Yeah. (laughs) because you know what something that i was thinking about the other day was like so it was like i guess like october 29th and like i saw somebody on the street dressed up like luigi and i'm like what is this fucking loser <laughs> like i'm like what is this idiot doing like you know and then like i just went to the store i came home and then the next day i was walking on the street and i saw somebody else dressed up and i was like oh i was like it's halloween, halloween. right and i'm like god it's so nice that i have my life where like to me halloween is bullshit so i don't have to put any 
energy into that. Yeah. Like, I'm just like, yeah, I think Halloween's dumb. Oh, I always thought it was pretty dumb. So, like, I don't have to care about it. But, but it's like how different my life would be if I had a kid where it's like, man, it's two weeks before Halloween. Well, what are you bringing to the school? What are you going to be for the, well, you got to be one thing for Johnny's uh, little party and one thing at school. He wants to be one thing when we go trick or treating, but something it's like, uh, like, and it's I like, just, see, that's the difference. I think that sounds fun. Right. But I'm saying everybody's yeah. going to have their thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whether my, like I love Thanksgiving. I think Thanksgiving is dope and I would want to put energy into that and the cooking and the fun where like, I just think like, I hate dressing up. I hate that. I just hate the whole now, thing. I if you had a kid and and for let's just hypothetical, you had a kid and we know how you feel about dressing up. Would that would you still no, let them try and enjoy themselves? Of and course. like if they said, I, I hey, dad, I want to dress up. I want to dress as Mario. No, wait. I want to dress as Luigi. No, wait. Would you go through all that and put yourself through that sort of, of stress? Yeah, you whatever would. he wants. Like I would. Good yeah, boy. And that's why I'm like, that's why. It would suck because I wouldn't just be like, no, we're not doing that. Like, I'd be like, yeah, okay, let's go. You want to be this? Like, I, I would pretend like, yeah, like I'm, but I'll tell you one thing. I'm not doing the Santa shit. Um, I, we've talked about that. I'm uh, from the get from day one. You mean presents? I, You're not going to buy them no, presents and pretend that they're from course Santa? There's going to be Christmas, but I'm not going to wait like Jamie for nine years going, when am I going to get my day of reckoning to get some attention for all these gifts and get some love? A right, like, I'm just going to be like, hey, I don't know about that shit. Like, if he's like, hey, what about Santa? I'm like, I don't fucking know Santa, dude. Like, like that's it. I'm just, I don't. You're not going to give them presents from Santa? No, that I'm saying I'm not going to lie and put this whole false thing. It's enough that I'm one day a year I'm buying you a fucking wh whatever you want. Like I'm gonna spoil my kids and I'm gonna be like, yeah, whatever you want that. But I will not be like, yeah, he lives up here with another fucking old lady, and yeah, they they're just they're 800 years old and they don't die, and like it's he the guy the only day a year he's running around is like one of the coldest day. Like he would be like like Bo said, he'd be dead. Like you're it's un, all you're unreal, dude. Nonsense. Like I'm not gonna. And then and then one day you're sitting there and laying in his bed, and he looks up at you and goes, "Daddy, is it real?" And I gotta go, "Oh shit, uh, mommy's fucking taking a shit." So I can't <laughs> tell you even right now that it's that it's a real thing. So I oh uh, let, let me just try and put you to bed, bud. Like it's just such nonsense to me. Like and I'm not gonna be like when he's four years old, like you listen to me. There's no Santa, but I'm also not gonna be like, yeah, he has elves and. That like I'm just gonna be like yeah I don't fucking know about that shit like <laughs> you know what Rob I don't know about that say, shit you say this now all right let's do it Jamie bet bet me whatever you want if I have a kid I will know you, there will be no when you got that sweet you little are face gonna looking be waiting at you, dude. on that line in that mall to get your kid on Santa's lap for that picture you're gonna be a little yes bitch if my kid, kid yes out about it I'm not saying that's not true. If my kid goes, I want to go take a picture with this guy, I'll be like, yeah, we'll go take a picture with this guy. But I'm not sitting around all the time. If your kid to wants him. to believe in Santa, though, and sees his cousins believe in Santa and the excitement go around Santa, you're going to have to do Santa. You're going to have to do. No, I just said <laughs> that's I'm, not, in, yeah. I'm not going to sit here going like, that's bullshit this. But I'm also not going to sit there like pontificating these fucking lot. Like I'm it's nice just not words. A lot Second of big nice words word today. today, dude. Yeah. You had, you had what? You what was your first word? Listen, Ruminate. I'm in, I'm in Texas now. Jesus rudimentary. Christ. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> what do you yeah. mean? When, when Jamie wasn't here three weeks ago, I wrote you a beautiful dude, spoken word. That. You've turned in. You've I turned into it. like a wordsmith. You're big in the words since you went to Texas. Everything's bigger there, including the words. Holy shit! Yeah, my vocabulary. Have you been reading or something? Ta honestly, nah. tell me what you've been. What have you been doing? Something's nah. changed in you. Poker. I don't know. Poke. I stopped eating sugar. Dude, same. Uh, same, brother. You know where I'm getting my jollies right now is fruit. Ooh. Oh, yeah. What are you eating? Dude, I got t three fat pomegranates at Whole Foods. And I'm just like, I fucking, you, you know how to uh, do a pomegranate? How do, what do you, it's not like peel. It's yeah, like, I go to the store and I buy the seeds. No, nah, see, I, that's no good. What I watched a YouTube video, you fill a fucking bowl up with water and then you, you sort of like, create some like an X and then you crack it open in the water and you just pull the seeds out. The seeds sink to the bottom. All the extra shit comes to the top and it kind of makes it a lot easier. It's a tip for all you guys that like pomegranate. Now I have a bowl of pomegranate 
I just spoon feed myself after a dinner, which has all been homemade dinners the last 18 days. I'll have, you know, working out Ooh, how, every day. How's the body looking? Yeah. Wouldn't you like to know, Jamie? Hmm? I would. That's why I asked. Um, I, you know, what's so funny is like the weight isn't coming off as fast as it I will. I it will. It's kind Whenever of been you slow. start. Whenever you start working out again and eating well, I always find like the first two weeks you almost get like puffier because like the muscles yeah, are I growing gain, underneath and then you shred. Yeah, I did get sort of like uh, I hit like a high a week into it. Yeah, which is so frustrating. <clears throat> but the the weight, you know, is trending down. Um, so I feel good. The, the important thing is I have more energy and I feel good. My sleep has been better. Um, so all it took was for me to lose my job. So great. I did, uh, I, I, I forget if we talked about this on the last pod. I did seven days, no nothing, like not even fruit, no honey, no no, nothing. And I was floating. Like I was fucking popping. I felt like every more, every morning I woke up, I was like, I could just go for a run. Right. Like I, 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 my apartment is like far down the hallway and I would just be like, I'm going to run down the hallway because I'll get there faster. Like I, I just felt so fucking good. In I'm going to read the dictionary and run down the hallway. I'm floating. Yeah. I just, I felt incredible. And then the day when I was like, all right, I can't do this anymore. And I was like, I'm going to have some fucking bananas and this like uh, oat milk, like oh, chocolate oat milk. Oh, and then dude. like, uh, remember when you were doing those banana chocolate smoothie things? That's what I, almond? that's what I'm doing. Yeah. That's oh, what I'm doing. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It's I like got, a protein you know, shake minus the protein. I found that Himalayan salt like popcorn that's cooked with coconut oil. Um uh, that's been like the one junk food, but it's like the lesser evil. It's that uh, company? I don't know, it's got like a face on it. I, I forget what it's called. Like a Buddha? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Lesser oh, evil. They yeah. have a jalapeno honey flavor that is electric. <laughs> I just I just ate some Twix. What were the uh what were the boys for Hall? You can can you send Gabby the photo you sent me that mm-hmm. I was like I think I was at a poker table and I just burst it into laughter. <laughs> so what were the boys? Right like some iteration of Spider Man. Bo was Miles Morales. Hell yeah! Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was so sick. I was so proud. Is that a guy he made up? Miles Morales. No, no he's the he's the black Hispanic Spider Man. You know, to yes. a whole generation of kids right now. Miles Morales is the Spider Man. Yeah, yeah, that, that picture is so because I know Jack. It's Jack's so face. funny, man. <laughs> it's it's the funniest face when you can't see someone's face. Just send it to Gabby. The please. one on the Cutter, left is Jack. The green, yeah, and yeah. Cutter was so he wore that to his parade, and I was working. I was in New Mexico on actual Halloween, and Cutter sent me videos from the parade, and you know how we talk about Jack's um, hammer. And uh, he was like, Jamie, it was like a bulge. Like Jack's costume was so tight. Oh, no, that's, that's he's like, it weird. was like all penis. It's an all we're penis gonna get, child's we're gonna costume. We're going to get demonetized. Yeah, dude. We're going to, we just, we have fell down the fucking pizza gate hole with that <laughs> statement. All right, you, I got an email before we go. It's about okay. lip filler. Remember how we were talking about lip filler? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I had a I had a question oh, about Jamie yeah. with that too. There was. Uh, I'm gonna forward you this email because um, she's got a photo of herself. Great. What, uh, Jamie? I saw some like you know. Usually, I feel like when it comes, you know, like the, amongst the guys I spend time with, I feel like I know more when it comes to like. Oh, women are doing this weird thing now where they do this. I'm like, they've been doing that for fucking 15 years, dude. Like, you know, like, but one thing that I heard the other day where I was like, oh, I don't know that one was uh, vagina sugaring. I'm not familiar. Uh, I'm also know. unfamiliar. It was one of these like reality shows. And she's like, yeah, I'm going to have like, and they didn't even like address what it was. Like she was like, yeah, I had vagina like sugaring. A scrub? Like a Hold scrub? On. I'm going to look vagina sugaring i feel like uh, that could cause like some like a yeasty sort of infection down there don't they say google collects your data and they know you when i google vagina it says vagina itchy vagina smells that also reminds me of this incident in virginia brazil which i talked about on my stream um, about a ufo crash that took place in brazil in 1994 i let my boyfriend film my reaction to getting my pubic hair removed using the sugaring technique oh, okay it's like a different way to get it's like a wax or whatever yeah well, um my mom used to make 
her own um, <laughs> wax out of sugar and like she'd make like a, almost like a caramel. Uh, That's probably what this is. Yeah. Thing and it's and it and she like heats it up and it's got like a it's very sticky. It's like a a, a caramel waxy thing. And she would use it, and she sold it for a while as a as a natural hair removal thing. But when she would make it, she would put some on a spoon, like off the yeah. off the 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 stove, and I would eat it like a candy because it hardened like <laughs> a candy, and it tasted good. It was like lemony and honey, and um, it was like a treat. Your mom was so ahead of her time. Yeah. You know, it was a treat. And then all these white women would always come over and be like, Annie, you got any more of your hair wax? And uh, she'd be like, yes, of course I have for you. And she tried to package it and they had like an Egyptian sort of like uh, design on it. uh, You know. Wow. And I remember my dad, I I don't know. I don't know. He was like supportive, but I don't think he was like stoked about spending all this money on it. Um, and I don't ever the really return remember. Return wasn't worth it. I don't think so. But they don't have Shark Tank in Jordan. <laughs> she no. Been on. She could have been on Shark Tank in Jordan. Sugaring is a hair removal process that uses sugar to get rid of your pubic hair. It's supposed to be less painful than waxing and all natural ingredients: lemon, sugar, and water. This is Annie fucking yeah. G. It's yeah. her recipe. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's got to be it. That's what. That's sugaring right okay because my mom was like it is it'll keep the the hair will come back take so much longer to come back it is smaller and it is blonde you don't see it i remember her saying it um it is sweet <laughs> it is sweet it tastes good for your pussy <laughs> you can give it to kids on halloween your husband will food. like your kids will like <laughs> she's just you passing feed, out fucking. you can feed you can feed your kid and shave your pussy at the same time <laughs> But be careful. Give them only the new one. Don't give them one you use. Sometimes it's a Friday night. I go, oh, Kasim is hungry and my pussy is hairy. I have what? I don't have enough time to do both. <laughs> too bad. They say two birds with one stone. <laughs> oh, it's good. All right. I'm going to read this quick email. I sent you guys the email. This is from Haley. She says, hi, Kasim, Jamie, and Robert first. Let me introduce myself. I'm Haley and I'm 25 years young and I live in Orlando, Florida. Speaking of Orlando, that's where my mom was making the the sugar wax. I've been a pajama <laughs> pants listener since last January. My third rewatch of The Sopranos led me to the Pajama Pants podcast. I've been debating for some time whether to write in or not, but here we are. I look forward to every Monday morning to listen to your podcast on my way to work and dread it when it comes to an end. You three have really inspired me to be more aware of my overall well-being and I love hearing your perspective on things because I want to be a better person. And I feel like you guys help me become a better person. I laugh when you guys joke about lip filler and I'm here to say, I love it. LOL. It totally changed my life and it's coming up on a year since I had it done and my lips aren't deflated or stretched. They aren't, they just aren't so plump anymore. They're not deflated or stretched. They're just not as plump anymore. So Jamie, if you ever find yourself seriously considering it, go for it. I love you three. Can't wait to listen next week for shits and giggles. Here's before and after picture of my lips. The after photo was roughly a month oh, later. Oh, look good. Yes, Jamie. Isn't, I, it, isn't it crazy that the world we live in today, it's like, it's almost been a year and I'm okay. Look, nothing happens. Like, that's what people base shit on now. It's like, hey, it's been nine months and I'm fine. Like, I, I smoked cigarettes for 10 years every day. I was fine. It doesn't mean it's okay for you. Right. right. Okay. Well, her lips do. She. They look great. They look good. They don't look overdone. Um, nope. They look and, natural, don't they? Yeah, it, it does look great. Uh, Haley, you look great. And, One year. Uh, obviously, I know this is different than like breast implants, but I know women who've had breast implants for fucking eight years and they're like, yeah, it's great. And then like one day it's not. OK. All right. Yeah, I'm um, getting real upset about this. I know, I hear you. I hear <laughs> no, you. No, no, she looks, she looks great. She looks and good. she didn't overdo it, which is very important. That's the key. That's the key. It really is. All right, hey, guys. It's the end of the pod. Thanks for listening. We're, uh, we're available. Oh, wait, on- Kaz. Yeah. Wait, I want to know how now uh, you see so all unbelievable, dude. Unbelievable. You're a fucking big Twitch streamer. I want to know how it's going. I haven't. Oh, dude, we launched fucking- this week, man. We launched this week. Uh, we, we got a thousand, eleven hundred subs this week. 
10,000 people following on Twitch. Wow. Yeah, really, really huge week. I had one guy buy 402 subscriptions yesterday. Um, an absolute Why does whale. one guy have to buy so many? He just wanted to. I felt like I was being, you know, it felt like it felt like I was like a hot little like stripper, you know, and he and he was a yeah. big, big whale. And he was like, I like this. I like the cut of this guy's jib. I'm going to treat him, you know, pretty woman style. And and uh, he's Richard Gere. And, uh, you know, each subscription is five bucks, man. And this guy spent 400 subscriptions on me. Wow. Uh, so what what do you what do you do, do you like make him feel special more special than the rest? What do I you send do him there? a picture of my my fucking cock, my dick, my cock, both of them, and uh, wow. yeah, we shattered him out, you know. And I sent him a nice message, and um, you know, there's a there's some other things we're gonna do to sort of highlight. We gave him a special little badge in the in the chat. But if you guys um are on Twitch or if you use Twitch, I'm on there Monday through Thursday. Come by, check me out, twitch.tv slash G. Um, the podcast is also on uh, TikTok, on Instagram, on Twitter. Jamie and I are also on there. Rob is off the grid. Do not try and contact him. R slash pajama pants podcast and ask pajama pants at gmail.com. If you want to be like Josh and the other one and email us. Um, <laughs> and if you are that girl that wrote in and you want some time on the pod, write in, give us your number. You'll get your shot. I want to make sure it's even Stevens. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's it. We'll see you next time.